You're supposed to have a plant in the background of these things to keep it interesting, but I couldn't find the plant, so I brought a dragon. Happy Lunar New Year! I'm filming this in Australia, so I'd like to respectfully acknowledge, sorry I'm hashing this, the Bunurong Bun Wurrung and Wurundjeri Woi Wurrung peoples of the Eastern Kulin Nation and pay respect for their elders past, present and emerging. They say the best way to spend your money is on experiences. I totally tried to game the system by booking us onto a Turkish lamp making masterclass because experience and stuff, am I right? Let me set the scene. Black like Friday rolls around and it's one of those words that's slightly spammed by ads on Instagram. Probably because I kept clicking on them. And would walk past the place that you actually go to make them. So it gave me the opportunity to magpie. Long story short, I wanted to make me a Turkish lamp. Sadly for Francis, he's my plus one. Now we are in Narm or Melbourne, so it does feel culturally a little bit off piece. But the people running the class were from Turkey and they gave us Turkish tea, which Francis drank because I am not a tea drinker. And Turkish delight, which I nobly sacrificed myself to consume jack sprat and all that let me introduce you to expectation versus reality my expectation was to have a nice calm class of francis and to be honest be good at making the lamp obviously i assume there'll be a skill to gauging certain elements but my mum said oh you should be good at that and i didn't want to disappoint her i have glued a lot in my time i am also an adult who has honed her fine motor skills i came into this whole thing thinking i'd have a good time a bit of a laugh and come up with a beautiful finish lamp reality strikes they don't give you any prep work but i would highly suggest you bring something long enough and wide enough to comfortably carry however many boxes you are making as in one per person probably we didn't think ahead and our bag wasn't the right size so we ended up awkwardly cradling them on the way home the other thing i'd recommend is something to stop her little bottles of pva glue so either cling film tin foil anything to just stick in quite a small hole you can go without it and we didn't actually have an issue but it would have made things a smidge easier also anyone with long hair bring a hair tie not essential but it's nice to be able to see and you will have sticky hands because we knew where we were going it was really easy to just pop in i think we either said our name or showed our reservation and we had gotten there maybe 10 15 minutes early but didn't need to wait to be seated so that was relatively smooth because it was just the two of us we were sharing a table with another couple which meant i had to be patient and polite normally i make charming small talk but i kid you not there was no time first up we had to map out our designs which we started as soon as we sat down and remember this was a smidge early i've been thinking about this on and off for a little while but didn't have anything set in plaster which is an appropriate analogy because you set the lamp with plaster so what i did was have a look around the room because they've got a load of example lamps that create the ambiance noting that they're all turned on being slightly old and wise it is worth pointing out that a lamp that is switched on does not look the same as one that is not switched on because it's got a plaster white base and it just gives a different vibe i decided that the overall feel that i liked was very colorful so that was my theme now i'm slightly anal so i did a repeating pattern the teacher does give you a set amount of time for this but it honestly just doesn't feel too long if you do want to see one of these classes and do care about what you make then i would recommend thinking about your design in advance of starting the class. I do not normally feel too tight for things, but the general theme of this whole class was that I felt tight for time every single step of the way, and that is a definite stress factor. <laughs> so you're at a stage where you need to decide what you want your design to be, whether it'll be repeating, whether you want to do any little twiddles, and your space for repeating depends on the size of your lamp. You could go smaller than we did and decorate a little tea light. Remember, we we're only at the glass stage at this point, we're not thinking about the beads. So I've got my plan, I've got my colours, I'm looking for my pieces of glass, they're not consistent i do appreciate that i'm blaming my tools and hands up have a slight tendency in that direction but the dark blue was my absolute enemy here i dug through all the pieces at our table and carefully because these are shards of glass here and honestly all the dark blue ones were just too big but i put on my big girl pants took a deep breath and dealt with it <laughs> spacing out my design a little bit more to accommodate the fact that these ginormous dark blue glass shards were there trying to make it I did also think about not having the dark blue, but honestly, it's just such a nice colour. Then, one of the teachers came round, looked over my shoulder, and had the audacity to say, Oh, those are a little bit big. Really? Yes, I know they're that big. Would you like me to look for smaller ones? Oh, yes, please. She comes back with the news a few minutes later that all of the tables have dark blue pieces of glass that big. <laughs> they are all legitimately gigantic compared to the others. Problem not solved. <laughs> Deep breath again. So you're at a stage where you know what you're doing, you've got all your pieces mapped out. Secondly, it's time to start PVAing them onto your glass globe. I know I said this is a Turkish lamp making class, it's actually a decorating. 
left in class and I'm most stressed about it. The teacher advised us to leave the main repeating pattern on your tray because you use that as a reference. Apparently people stick them on and forget what their pattern is. The main logistical issue at this stage is you have to judge how much PVA you're putting onto the glass globe so as not to have it dripping everywhere in your piece of glass sliding around but also to actually stick your piece of glass on there. In retrospect I will say as well you don't want any bubbles under the glass so I guess more PVA is better as long as you can keep it where it is because the plaster just gets underneath and that is not a good look. It just doesn't look as pretty. What worked best for us and what the teacher suggested was doing it in sections. So you stick, hold on, and then once it's not moving too much, you move on to the next section. Then you check back to make sure it hasn't slipped. You always hold your globe sideways as well with the bit that you're working on facing upwards. I did actually play around with my design a little bit at this stage, swapping the colours of my smaller side pieces around a tiny bit. However, I did have every single piece of glass that I needed on my tray, bar the fact that I miscounted. I had a couple of very frantic minutes going, I need more, I need more, and I feel exactly the same size. It is harder than it sounds, because you're not just looking for colour, but you're looking for size, proportion, and prettiness. And an added issue is that you may need to share with just. I will also say that it's quite hard to keep everything on the same plane. If you're doing a pattern on each side, there are manufacturing lines on the glass that can give you a little bit of a guide. Basically bisects the lamp. So you've got kind of your X plane sorted, but your Y axis, how far you need to go up vertically, is a little bit of a gamble. I did only really notice that when I was adding three twiddly diamonds on between my big flowery things. They're not 100% split into thirds, but the bigger issue is that they're not on the same horizontal plane. So after trying to jimmy them up or down as appropriate. I ended up angling my twiddly diamond so it looks like they're straighter than they are. You can't really tell on the end product, hence why it was hard to map out, but it's irritating nonetheless. Perhaps another prep point is to bring on those flexible tape measures. If this will annoy you, then you can just divide the circumference into three or however many points you're doing and just make sure they're consistent as you go. Whoever said you wouldn't use maths again? Thirdly, it's time to start sticking on the beads, but being careful to avoid the lips because otherwise the lamp won't fit on the stand. Before you stick though, you've got to mix. Relatively straightforward, I use the same colour in my bead mix I did on the base of my lamp. Believe it or not, I didn't use all the colours possible because there's no pink, no purple, no brown, no black. If you want to avoid certain colours, you need to be aware of the pot that you're pouring from because they're all open and liable to mix. People are not always careful and the beads are also very fiddly, so it's, it's really easy to accidentally mix them as well. You do have to be conscious about it. You mix your beads in a cup and the next question is how many you need? The cup I filled was maybe three quarters full and I needed to remix twice twice more to fully cover my lamp. So another one of the same amounts, another three quarters, and then a smaller amount. This was less than ideal because again, anality. My colour proportions were not the same. I did try. It's like pinch, pinch, pinch. I couldn't remember how many pinches I put in there. I didn't write it down. As it was, I felt the first mix I did was a little bit too colourful because the standout pieces were the glass design. So I used my first batch to cover the bottom half and then added more clear beads in in subsequent iterations. For my design, the two mostly full cups and the smaller cup were pretty darn close to exact on filling that space and not having too many beads left over. But it is an extra level of guesswork that I didn't appreciate. As a design point, you can test your bead colour combination by mixing some and then putting it inside the glow, then seeing how that looks against your glass design. That's a tip we really appreciated from the teachers because I wouldn't have thought of doing that. In order to stick the beads onto the globe, <laughs> my oh my it's messy. You could literally hear the pitter patter of them pinging around onto the floor from all quarters. Again, a stitch. I was trying to be really careful but you effectively liberally slather on the PVA and then smoosh on the beads. From memory we used our hands because it was the least messy option bead wise. I blocked out most of this as a bad memory. I think I also used my mixing cup to sprinkle some on really carefully into the appropriate places. The beads, like the glass, are not all the same size and shape. You'll just have to deal with it. There is unlikely to be enough time to pick individual beads. The bell has gone, or teacher said it's over. I think she did say we were welcome to stay a bit longer if we hadn't finished, but we had just. Your heart is pounding. Your piece is not finished. You have homework, which consists of plastering after the fact. Hopefully your PVA is mostly dry, but you need to box up your beautiful creation and take it home. Being the anal child that I am, I vigilantly tidied up my workstation, putting the leftover pieces back into their allotted bowls. But with the brain smarts I am famous for, I grabbed a few spare beads and put them into my box. 
I also packed up my bottle of PVA and tried to make it airtight. Newsflash, didn't work. That was mostly because of a poor stopper system on single-use bottles, and also because we left it a while before embarking on homework. I direct you back to prep work. Bring a bag which will fit the box horizontally, as well as something to stop the glue. Or don't worry about it if you have functional PVA at home. If you're lucky, before you go, someone will assemble your lamp with you cringing in the background about the integrity of the PVA, and you'll be able to see what an awesome job you've done so far. They are a bit fiddly to assemble, so let the professionals demonstrate. Put your baby carefully into its box and then in the bag which you listened to me about bringing. Ensure you've got your spare beads and the optional PVA. Then honestly go somewhere for a quiet sit down. The fourth and final step at home is almost the most stressful. We are house sitting so we need to be extra extra careful that we don't leave plaster on someone else's stuff. My advice to you regardless is to lay out plastic bags because this time you need to clear up the mess. Another tip from yours truly is to check your design. Are there any obvious gaps? Any wobbly bit? Does it need more PVA? You followed my advice and grabbed some extra beads and glue. So secure your piece, leave it a day and then plaster. It will look better. When you're ready to commence step four, mix the plaster and the ratios they advise. For us it was about 45 millilitres or grams of water to the little bag of plaster that they provided. Then slather it on to your design. Try not to do too much extra because it is a to get off but you need to get into all the crevices then wait a couple of minutes and use the dry sponge don't make the same mistake i did and think oh well, it's a sponge it has to get wet it's not a dry sponge and scrub off any extra you want to be able to see at least some of every single bead also a reminder to scrub off any extra around the lips because like we're putting the beads on you need to be able to assemble the lamp the terrifying warning the teacher gave us was to not leave the plaster for too long because if you do you cannot scrub any extra off and neither can they apparently some people come back to the shop with a plaster disaster and there's nothing they can do we found and we did have more time than the teacher suggested but it is better to start off with too much time than too little it obviously also depends on the climate but i did mine on quite a warm humid day so maybe 20 to 25 degrees inside and about 80 percent humidity outside just get it on and off as promptly as possible while securing your design easier said than done but i honestly don't think i can give you great advice on this one aside from not wetting your sponge because that messes with the plaster and water ratios though if you do run out of sponge they are rippable so you have more corners which is really useful but you can also use kitchen roll that does come apart a little bit though. It's at this stage that you realise just how uneven the beads are, as well as the fact that the glass you stuck on was flat on a curved surface as your plaster sneaks in. Be careful not to cut yourself. If you are anything like me, you'll spend ages trying to perfect your design. Top tip, if a bead falls off and you find yourself trying to secure it with plaster, it'll have plaster under it and look a little bit dull. If the gap isn't too big, do consider whether you should just leave it as a gap. So plaster filling in that space. I put mine in a piece of paper from the class box, then grab the event that was my plaster station and put it in a safe place to dry before dumping it. While it's drying, you can assemble your lamp and have a gawk. This is much easier with two people. One to hold down the springs and the other to ease it gently together. Make sure the switch is off, plug it in, turn all the other lights off, then switch it on and prepare to see the magic. Probably around the next day, your lamp is complete. Well done you! You made a work of art and had a stressful experience. So, expectation versus reality. I got a lamp out of it. Mine is magical and creates a lovely atmosphere. I'm really happy with the colours I chose, though I will be eternally irritated about the inconsistencies in glass sizes. The beads I do understand somewhat because they're so tiny, but it is frustrating being on the back foot because of a materials issue. It was by no means a relaxing, enjoyable experience for me, though. I also hadn't fully clocked that you'd have to do more at home, but it does make sense. I feel like the plastering was something I would like to have been supervised over, though not sure how I feel about going back in the day to do it. Perhaps if it had been split over one day, so you go in first thing in the morning, have the stress PVA sesh, go away for a couple of hours and enjoy the city because you're really slap bang in the centre, then come back and plaster under supervision, that probably would have been my ideal scenario. You do get sent home with the instruction book as well as the advice that there are videos if you get stuck. I didn't watch the videos, which I perhaps should have done, but it did seem relatively straightforward from the instructions and by the time I'd started, you can't really stop. You've got really messy hands and you're really worried about the plaster just solidifying. Overall, it was an experience and to be honest I do want to do it again but with the provisos of perhaps actually being in Turkey thinking about a different theme which would have to be complementary to my current lamp and it was consistently cut glass pieces I'm not mad about using that dark blue I really love how the light comes through the gorgeous colours on my lamp and remember if you hate your finished piece that much you can always donate it to the shop as a display piece if it's that bad they can open a display on what not to do 